Right, let's turn to Georgia, where in a last-ditch effort to prevent the passing of a controversial law, overnight protests in Georgia has continued into the morning. Security forces have pulled out from the main square after a standoff with protesters outside parliament in Tbilisi. The protesters oppose a controversial foreign influence bill described by critics as the Russian law. The final voting on the bill is scheduled for Tuesday. Earlier in the day, the governing Georgian Dream Party lawmakers rushed the bill through a committee vote, approving it in just 67 seconds. The bill, now due to go for its third and final reading, targets civil society organizations and independent media that receive foreign funding. Protesters are concerned that the law would be used by the government to clamp down on dissent and would harm Georgia's hopes of joining the European Union. And for more on the situation in Russia and the protest in Georgia, Global Affairs Analyst Collins Owenke joins me from the Belgian capital, Brussels. Good to have you join us. Thank you, officials, for having me. So let's begin with this um, latest development in Russia. Um, you will recall that in April, one of um, President Putin's deputies, Timo Ivanov, was arrested on corruption charges, and, and that was in a very rare move um, against such a senior official. What do you make of this shakeup in the power structure in Russia, and why now? Ordinarily, um, one will not uh, read any extra meaning to, um, you know, the sort of actions that uh, Vladimir Putin has taken. Neither could one have any qualms with um, parliament uh, trying to do the job for which, um, you know, they were elected. You see, but um, the reason the situation in both Russia and Georgia are special is the fact that uh, although... Uh, the foundations of uh, these countries were built on uh, democratic uh, principles. We have seen them over the years gradually drifting away from democracy and more into autocracy. And so anything that happens, like uh, what we're witnessing today, is viewed with extra uh, scrutiny. And so that is uh, actually the origin of uh, the massive protest that uh, we have seen in Georgia trying to stop the parliament from, um, you know, voting uh, after the third and final reading of uh, the bill aimed to, according to them, curb pre press uh, freedom. Hmm. And, and uh, still staying on, on that Russia um, shakeup, I also wanted to ask you about this. Many have talked about how this sort of links to the comments made against or the rivalry between um, then head of Wagner Group, who, who has now died in, in a plane crash or helicopter crash, um, Yevgeny Prigozhin, who had had that r public rivalry with the Minister of Defense or the Ministry of Defense, and we've now seen that shake up um, or that, you know, after that, after that fallout. But also, people are also talking mm -hmm. about, look, um, in Ukraine, President Zelensky has also recently removed his Minister of Defense. He also appointed an economist, um, Rostem Umerov. Both countries seem to be re-strategizing for the next phase of this war and the economics of it, do you think? Absolutely. I mean, there is what they call the uh, economics of war. Now, um, in war time, of course, you need both the, um, you know, uh, military professionals as well, uh, and that is where you are at the core of, uh, of the war itself, because they understand the military uh, strategies and all of that, but it is also prudent uh, and politically savvy to begin to already think beyond the war. Now, at the end of the war, and indeed while we're trying to manage the war, how do you go about the economics of it in terms of, um, you know, managing your resources such that uh, you are able to sustain the war by way of acquisition of uh, ammunition, but also economic policies that actually help to show up uh, your economy? So it is not a surprise at all that, uh, you know, these two uh, unrelated, um, you know, shakeups uh, from uh, rivalries are actually pointing towards uh, the same uh, direction. Uh, do you, you can describe it indeed as being uh, politically uh, savvy. Mm. And let's now get to what you were talking about earlier, um, what's going on in Georgia. I want to get you know, your thought on that foreign, um, foreign influence bill 
and then the protest that has followed, and the timing of it all, which is very interesting because it's close to the general elections in, in October. Well, um, like I uh, mentioned in my intro, I mean, um, you know, such a law, uh, you have it everywhere, both in the U.S., uh, many countries of the EU actually try to, uh, you know, pass laws to ensure that there are no, um, you know, foreign interferences in their domestic uh, politics, okay? So it is normal. And um, in politics, um, you know, and even in international relations, you need to think in the best interest of your country. But the reason people are picking holes on this particular one, just indeed as they did in Israel recently, that, uh, you know, decided to, um, you know, close um, Al Jazeera in Israel, is because, you know, they could read through it and see the intentional efforts there to actually, you know, clamp down on uh, press uh, freedom. And the, both the uh, two countries uh, at the heart of the conversation now, which is uh, Georgia and, um, you know, uh, Russia, are seen uh, to be enemies of the West. One, you know, both of them are coming closer and closer together, while Paul showed that their citizens, especially in Georgia, uh, are actually leaning a lot more to uh, the European uh, Union. And so, to be able to forestall some of the fundings that they believe uh, are coming from the European Union to destabilize them, um, you know, their, uh, you know, politics, they decided it is the right thing to pass uh, this uh, law. We'll also see um, how all of this would tie into um, Georgia's ambition to join the European Union. Um, many would say, look, that's also a stake here. Or following developments in both countries, that's Georgia and Russia. Thank you so much for your time. Um, Global Affairs and Ms. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.